Let's Talk Property webinar begins in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, and we're live. Welcome to Let's Talk Property. It's our weekly property thought leadership webinar brought to you every Wednesday at this time by Real Estate Investor and Elan Property Group. My name is Neil Peterson, founder and editor-in-chief of uh, Real Estate Investor Digimag and the REI digital platform, and I'm really honored to be your host today. And I'll be sharing the hosting seat along with Derek Watson, Eugene Boniface of Elan on alternate weeks at this time every Wednesday to bring you the very latest, the best insights, resources, news, investment opportunities on everything around real estate in South Africa and the globe. This is the place to be. So welcome to all of you, not Facebook, where I believe many people turn to for advice. And we are here to assist, educate, guide you and give you access to property pr practitioners, investment experts who can help you navigate your property businesses, investments and improve our lives and to make it so much better from an investment perspective. Especially now when we need it most through tough times as a result of lockdown and COVID-19, which has really been a game changer for many of us. So let, let me introduce you to our topic today. And we're focusing on how PropTech is rapidly changing the world. Uh, this is almost part two of our discussion that started last week. And today we decided we're gonna focus on specific technologies that you can use and that can actually help you. So I wanna to welcome to our panelists and we look forward to your valuable insights and knowledge and I will introduce them a little later. And once again, we have a great lineup of prop tech specialists on our panel, uh, which we'll introduce a bit shortly. So to you, the audience, welcome. Very warm welcome to you. Um, we welcome your interactivity and your participation in today's webinar. And just for yourself, for best audio and visual quality, please switch off all other streaming videos or anything that slows down your internet speed. And it's probably best to put your microphone on mute if you are a participant. So let's keep this webinar interactive. And though you'll see at the bottom of the screen, there's a Q and A box for any questions um, that you would like to pose to the panelists. Um, so please identify the panelists and then pose your question at any time during the webinar. And then, during the webinar, you'll see a poll will come up onto your screen at various intervals. And there will be multiple choice questions and we ask you to vote. And uh, so we welcome your input on that and your feedback on that. That's very important. So let's move on to today's topic. It's really exciting and it's called how PropTech is rapidly changing the world. Now, what is PropTech? Well, essentially it's a combination of innovation, technologies and solutions that optimize the creation in managing real estate. It refers to technology that aids or improves the way we buy, the way we sell, and the way we manage real estate. So there's no silver bullet. However, digital innovation continues to change economies and markets, reinventing the way business is done regardless of industry. We've seen in the media and the telecom sectors were impacted straight away by digital. Real estate has been a little bit slower, but is starting to, be, to benefit today, which we're gonna see a little bit later. And uh, so the transformation as a result of lockdown has been certainly more widespread and usage of prop tech is definitely getting more used. So it's at the point now where you can actually benefit from these innovations. And this is what we're gonna do today to propel your property business, to show you the kind of technology that is available, some practical solutions that could change your business. And it has the benefits of making faster, more accurate, more cost-effective business decisions and property decisions and, and, and why real estate companies choose it in the first place. So we can help buyers and prof uh, professionals and practitioners like yourself gather and interpret data very quickly view properties online through virtual tours, determine the value of property. And we know that digital platforms not only allow users to interact with the market, 
but it also allows for faster, easier, and cheaper transactions, accelerating the growth of the property sector as a whole. So today we, we're going to show you four types of prop tech, and uh, and it's going to be on a slightly different tack because we want to go deep down and a deep kind of a deep dive today. So we're going to be looking at reality, virtual reality twists, which has taken off. And uh, according to new research, nearly half of all potential home buyers search for properties on the internet first. So they first go online and virtual reality and augmented reality will make the online property search and home buying experience even more exciting. For new developments, virtual reality can create realistic architectural images and walkthroughs to help buyers understand and experience the property way before constructions begin. And for property managers, a virtual tour could quite literally walk the tenant through the property, demonstrating step-by-step step what you need to see along the way. We already have property portals such as Property24 in South Africa, Private Property IL, we have Trulia, we have uh, Zillow in the US. They've already disrupted, uh, but that was in using the power of big data in the early 2000s. So, Today, we look at various platforms that collectively can market your prop property and, and give you massive benefits. We're going to look at digital business cards, at chatbots, and uh, we're going to look at also a platform that is going to be unique for you to transfer. So we say that this is not a fair for property practitioners. And should you ignore these, technolo these technological innovations, you do it at your own peril. And uh, these prop tech trends are just the beginning, what we believe could be a wave of improvements and changes to come. So if you're a broker agent, we, we feel that you've got, to adopt, you've got to adopt this in conjunction with what you're doing already. So on that note, and on that introduction, I'd like to introduce you to our four expert prop tech panelists will introduce themselves first and uh, and so we'll start off first of all from Bart and let me tell you what Bart is sitting in um, United States I mean it's I think it's three o'clock in the morning he's in Denver Colorado Scott, welcome to you please introduce yourself to the audience hello everybody my name is Bart Wilson I am the chief marketing officer and the founder of virtual pictures uh, thank you Neil for the uh, kind invitation uh, we uh, are pleased to be able to come and uh, speak to uh, fellow real estate colleagues. I'm a former real estate agent, uh, was dual licensed in both New Mexico and Colorado, and came onto the company about nine years ago and uh, brought a lot of my real estate expertise uh, because doing real estate online uh, is one way of doing things. And we certainly needed to have, uh, I think, a voice in how virtual reality and photography was being used and help shape our business so that we can keep our home inventory selling and keep our customers engaged online. Fantastic. Thank you, Bob. Well, welcome to you and thank you for being up so early. In the <laughs> no worries. Thank All you. right, so welcome up. <laughs> and we look forward to, to hearing from you a little bit later. And Bruce, welcome to you. Bruce, please introduce yourself. Thanks, Neil, and good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Bruce Koenig. Um, I own a company called Meishi. Uh, we specialize in a digital business card software, um, mainly to the, the real estate agencies or, or market. Um, we've done a lot of them in South Africa and actually in 18 different other countries. Um, we also specialize in the 360 virtual tours, which we're an agent for um, VPIX. Um, under Bart Wilson, um, and we also specialize in an AI lead generating chatbot, um, which is very popular for generating leads um, for the real estate market. Fantastic, welcome Bruce, and I'll and I tell you what, I'm really excited to see this new tech, and, uh, and I'm sure everybody else is. I mean, this is very different from what we've done before. Uh, from our previous webinars because people want to see things in action. How can we use this to our best? So, so I really look forward to that, uh, Bruce. So welcome to you. Thanks, and then Neil. to our next two guests, uh, Karen and Wayne. Karen, will you introduce yourself, please, to the audience? Thanks, Neil. And um, thanks very much for having us. Um, we're very excited to participate in this process. 
Um, so obviously I'm Karen Miller. I am the principal and co-founder of Point Online. I started my property career 12 years ago as a residential agent in the V&A Marina. Um, and I absolutely love the excitement of selling property, negotiating property, closing deals. But I became very frustrated with the increasing lack of information, difficulty getting information, um, verifiable information from landlords and, and sellers. And there's really inefficient processes um, in terms of the whole offer process and, and submission of sale agreements. And this is really what inspired us to develop our platform. And really all they do is they automate the current manual processes um, of marketing, verifying and transacting and turn them into an online process. No, Wonderful. I'm... That's fantastic. And then Wayne, of course, um, for you. Yeah. Welcome to um, you. I'm Wayne van der Fint. I've been in the property business just on 30 years, which means I started when I was five. And uh, done pretty much everything that can be done in commercial space and sort of ended my formal career as head of properties at the Public Investment Corporation. And so I've been involved in the buying and selling of properties for, for a very long time. And felt together with Karen when we joined forces, we felt that there must be a more efficient way to do business. Because although I've been in that space for, for a long time, I think most property companies will reluctantly admit that their last upgrade in tech was when they bought Excel. And, and that's pretty much where it stopped. And, and technology is probably one of the things that has been slowest to to be utilized in the property space and, and i think what we offer unlike some other spaces and i think to that end um part in that epix have an edge as well is that we come out of a property background and so with a property background and overlaying it with technology you supplying technology that makes sense as opposed to being technology people who are now trying to shoehorn something into the property space. And I think that that, that understanding of property is really what is going to make the difference in, in terms of the technology being created, but also being adopted. I think the adoption is an important aspect and understanding how, how the industry works makes the adoption a lot easier. So yeah, we're looking forward to the chat. Wonderful. And welcome to both of you, Karen and Wayne. It's wonderful having you. And, and in fact, to all the panelists, I'm really excited. So Bart, we're going we're gonna to move over to you first. And, uh, you know, virtual reality tours have become... Um, quite widespread during a lockdown and in South Africa. So it's over to you, Bart, and uh, I know you're going to take us through a little bit of an introduction as to virtual tours and a background on it, and, and particularly on your product. So welcome to you. It's over to you, Bart. Well, great. Well, thank you very much for that. And um, yeah, I have to confess that yeah, the industry has changed quite a bit, uh, especially since the COVID lockdown, when um, I guess we got first notified the first week of March, um, I figured, you know, I could go from the Denver office to home and, you know, play with the dog and, you know, have some time off and read some books. Um, none of that happened. Um, the whole business went, you know, kaboom. And, um, you know, I started getting 30, 40 phone calls a day, then 100 phone calls, and then the email avalanche kind of came in. So it was uh, really interesting to see how fast the actual uh, old planet really just kind of said, well, we're all stuck at home too. Um, can you guys do our virtual tours? Sure. <laughs> what do you need? You know, so thank you with the uh, a advent of technology, we were able to bring in obviously uh, Zoom, you know, conferencing. And we were uh, kind enough to meet, uh, you know, Karen and Wayne, you know, from South Africa and started doing some virtual tours through MySheet and found that the synergy of our two companies were quite complementary. 
it was really nice to kind of see how fast the technology uh, was adopted and picked up. So uh, once again, thank you for being here. Um, thank you for letting me be here. So a little bit about our company. We have been around for a little while. Uh, the company originally started in 1999. Um, I got on board about nine years ago. And back in the day, in 1999, there were only five virtual tour companies on the whole planet. Um, we were one of them. Um, we had a company called 360 House. Um, they're now called Obeo, and they're based in Salt Lake City. Um, so is Circle Picks, uh, Real Tour Vision, a uh, company based in Michigan, um, Tour Factory, and also VPix. Um, being one of the first virtual tour companies uh, certainly has um, some advantages. Um, my roots, of course, uh, go far, far back. Uh, to NASA when my dad was one of the rocket scientists actually building the cameras that went from the Apollo moon missions. Um, I, after I got out of high school, a little college um, combat veteran from the United States Air Force, served in Turkey, um, those areas of the Middle East, uh, Eastman Kodak, uh, director of digital applications, uh, Apple computer, uh, Netscape, and then of course, you know, one of the founders here at Virtual Pictures. Um, one of the nice things I think I can say I'm proud about one of our most interesting, I would say, accomplishments is the fact that we are the only virtual tour company recognized by a company called Entrepreneur Magazine. Um, we've been blessed for the last three years in a row uh, to have received the coveted E360 award. And even though we're still a small company, uh, last year we ranked 214th best company in America as according to the polls and results from Entrepreneur Magazine. So what do we do at VPix? Well, virtual tour cameras is just one small part of what we do. Uh, we essentially make real estate friendly software that allows real estate agents, um, estate agents, brokers, title companies around the world to really take advantage of the cameras they currently have because we are a software company and a real estate company. We're camera agnostic. You can use almost any camera that you want, which is one of the nice reasons why I can say we play very well with others, including other technologies like our colleague Bruce at uh, Maishi in, South, in uh, South Africa. Our software is complementary with a digital business card. Um, we're also plug and play with many of the large real estate portals. So when we need to publish these interactive properties into your listing engines, we work well with CoStar, uh, LoopNet, Kaya, and many others. Um, some of the things that we don't do here at VPix, well, um, we've heard complaints that some virtual tour companies just don't answer their phones. I never heard of that. <laughs> we do answer our phones here, as you can see, sometimes three o'clock in the morning, um, but we are here for our customers and we have expanded to eight office locations around the world so that we can actually respond to our customers. Um, we understand that when we do the 2D and 3D floor plans, it's not about us, it's about you. You know, these are your floor plans, these are your images, they're your copyrights. Um, so we understand that from day one. So we don't put our brand on these things, we will put yours. Um, also, you won't find us doing little things like nickel and diming you guys to death. So this is one of the first most common questions we have because there are so many companies out there right now and so many companies offering virtual tour cameras and technology, the big question is, which one do we get? And that can be a little confusing for a lot of customers. So one of the things we like to do is educate people on saying, well, what do you have? And as Barbara Corcoran once said from ABC Shark Tank, we like to talk to real estate agents and say, let's use what you've got. Um, we talked to a few people who have sometimes been mildly upset um, with, shall we say, their virtual tour technology. And of course, that happens from time to time. So one of the things we find out very quickly is how real estate friendly is your property technology. And uh, sometimes it's a little confusing. So we try to help our customers um, through the experience. Uh, they find out that, well, we have Android devices and the company we're working with says we have to be iOS or iPad only. We can't edit our photos before we upload them to your system. We can't reach a live person for help or chat. 
um, and your windows just don't look very good. They're kind of blown out, they're white, and that's obviously not a very good way of doing virtual tours. Well, as one of the technologists at Eastman Kodak that helped build digital cameras, we have an answer for that. Um, the nice thing about uh, understanding technology is really we've got a small little sensor on a tiny little $300 camera and it fits on the size of your tip of the finger. That's the problem. <laughs> you know, if you have a Nikon camera or some of these larger cameras, they have a much larger sensor. So it's really basic physics. If you have a bigger sensor, you have a lot more area for light to hit, which means you're gonna capture a much more beautiful looking image. It's only one small catch. That camera's gonna cost you a little bit more to produce a better looking image. So it's a lot like what mom told us, you're gonna get what you pay for, especially when it comes to building, of course, a virtual tour with an inexpensive camera. So back to our March entree, you know, why virtual tours? We found it's really one of those things you gotta have in this new economy. And it is kind of COVID proof because it allows our businesses around the world to continue. It allows us to have the ability to showcase homes where customers who are shopping for homes online can actually see things without us physically having to be there. So for real estate agents, we don't have to be taxi drivers. We don't have to worry about perhaps catching the COVID virus from someone else. So it allows our business to continue by offering a technology that allows people to step inside and look around from wherever they are. Um, we have a little experience in doing this. Um, we've done, as of the 1st of June, a little over 478,000 virtual tours around the world. Um, we've developed 274,000 uh, floor plans. Uh, since uh, the last 10 years, we've tracked over 8,000 workshops, and we've helped 448,000 plus homes sell a few weeks sooner than they would have done without a virtual tour. Some of our customers, of course, include uh, Maishi, you know, online, uh, Cressa, Choice Hotel, Century 21, some of the usual brands that uh, you'd expect from realtors that are certainly using our product. One of the things I think makes us stand out a little bit is um, our education. Um, like Neil's group in this particular forum, we find that education is really going to be a real estate agent's best friend. Because without technology, we have a lot of people kind of buying things only because everyone else seems to be buying it, only to find out that it's not so real estate friendly after you buy it. So we like to educate people on here's what you can do with the technology. And that's a very important consideration because by teaching people, here's what you can do with it. We also find that's a rewarding experience because the customer doesn't normally have that time to go out there and figure it out on their own. So that's one of the things that we like to do here at Virtual Pictures. Uh, we do offer a two day a uh, boot camp for any real estate agent that of course is interested in learning more. Um, this is where you can contact us, of course, um, bpix360.com uh, for online. Um, my WhatsApp uh, phone number is certainly there. And you can also reach me uh, through LinkedIn. Um, that concludes my presentation. I wanted to kind of go through our background in a little bit of virtual tours and uh, open it up for questions at any point in time. Wonderful. Thank you. Great stuff. Okay, so we'll move on to the broader questions, you know, after all the presentations are in. But I do have a question for you, Bart. And I think it's more probably pertinent to the South African market. I think um, a lot of people are challenged by the cost of obviously virtual tours and, uh, and the economies of scale to say, well, if I'm going to invest in this technology, am I going to get that kind of return? And I think for brand new builds and new developments, it works exceptionally well. And, uh, but I think, is it necessary for if you're just selling a house? You know? And I think this is what a lot of agents and brokers have to kind of cross this divide. So um, just in turn, do you want to maybe just comment on the, the, you know, on the cost aspect? Because it, 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 it's rather a big decision, I think, for a lot of agents being able to justify the cost of using the virtual tour as an instrument to, to, to sell real estate. Do you want to maybe just chat Thank a little you. bit about that? 
very, very good question. You know, this is really kind of like the new way of doing things, but virtual tours are not new. Um, when I first started with virtual tour technology, I joined Apple Computer and Night and Connect and other real estate expos. We get a lot of these same questions is how do we make this investment? And it's not so much the investment in the hardware per se, it's really in learning what to do with the technology. We have a digital camera, okay, we have a virtual tour camera, we have people who already have a Canon or an Icon DSLR, and we have a rotator, and we have a Sigma 8 millimeter lens, and they're under $2,500, you know, US. So when you look at justifying the cost, losing pays for this whole thing five times over. So when I able to when I'm able to explain those things to a real estate agent broker, the cost seems to be, oh, well, that's right. Well, I'm a former real estate agent. I mean, you know, I'm picking up over fourteen thousand dollars for a single home sale. I can afford twenty five hundred dollars single purchase, and that's going to give dividends after I shoot my first home and sell it, and then my second, third, fourth. It all becomes great from that point in time. The other thing that we have to do is we're constantly investing in micro learning sessions because loop net's going to change property technology is going to change website guys are going to be making changes to their websites how do we add virtual tours to social media we're the company who can help teach you what to do with those virtual tours as technology changes so i can keep people up with change so it's a two-part road where one part is certainly going to be the investment in the lens the hardware the second thing is really investing in your own people and investing in your own real estate agents uh, is a huge mm. reward that pays over and over mm. dividend after dividend. Absolutely. Great. Thank you, Bart. Thanks for clarifying that. We're now going to move on to Bruce. Um, Bruce is from Meishi and uh, he has very uh, interesting and very innovative products. So, Bruce, um, it's over to you. I know you've got some uh, demos also here for us and for yes. our audience today. Yeah. Thanks, Neil. Um, I'm just gonna share my screen quickly. Um, just give me one second. Yep, there we go. Can Thanks, you Bruce. see my screen? Yes. yes, thank you. Thanks, Neil. Um, I just wanted to add on to what Bart was saying, you know, the cost of a virtual tour um, for one building or one entrance or one house in South Africa, we're charging about 250 rand um, a month for the software. Um, also, um, depending on, on how many virtual tours you take, but it's about 250 rand a month um, to host one virtual tour. Um, yeah, going back to, to my side, um, our main, or at Meishi, our main product that we've developed is the digital business card software. Um, um, we've done quite um, a few different industries. Um, we specialize mainly in the real estate industry. Um, and what it is, it's a, it's a um, sorry, my phone is just going off. Um, it's a, a progressive web app that saves as an app on your phone. Um, and you can tap on it and share it to um, anyone, anywhere in the world, as many times as you want. And it will actually save as a little app on their phone, um, or they could save it into their, their phone's contacts. So this is what it looks like on my home screen. Um, your app can save either as your company logo um, or as a profile photo. Um, that just depends on you. So I'm just going to tap on anyone. I'm just going to give you a live demo on how it works. So if I tap open it. Um, this is the main landing page. Um, it's fully customizable, so we can customize it according to your company's CR or branding. Um, and our main design is a split screen design, so you can swap left or right. So on um, Brett Boxes' digital business card from SIF, if I swipe to the left, I'm just using it for demo purposes. Um, once again, it's fully customizable. We can put in um, your company logo, um, or a profile photo, we can put in a little bio about yourself or about your company. Um, and it's fully interactive uh, from the digital business card. For instance, if you want to call Brett, uh, you just tap on his cell phone number to call. Um, if you want to email him, you just tap on his email address. Um, and you can email straight from the digital business card. Um, even if you're looking for their offices, um, you can just tap on the maps. And this, we can link to other Apple Maps or Google Maps. 
Um, so it's fully interactive. Um, everything hosted on one platform on the digital business card. Um, you can also put in all your social media. Uh, we can do quick links, uh, quick WhatsApp links to the direct WhatsApp chat. Uh, we can do email, um, text message or SMS. Um, that's, that's up to you. So that's, that's all fully customizable. Um, the digital business card also saves straight into your phone's contacts, um, not only as a little app on your home screen. Um, and then right at the bottom, uh, we've also created a little a request the callback form, which is also fully customizable. Um, if I swipe to the right um, on the digital business card, um, this side you can really get creative. Um, everything that you need to run your business, uh, we can um, embed it and digitize it um, on one platform. Uh, so we can do quick links to your website, we can do quick links uh, to specific parts of your website, we can do links to multiple websites. Um, so every agent can have their own individual listings um, or they can, or it can be directed to um, the whole company's listings. Um, we can also embed your bond originator that you use in, your attorneys that you use in, um, that's up to you. Um, and another thing that we do is all your flyers, your brochures, we can digitize all of those and embed it into your digital business card. So what we're trying to do is um, eliminate all forms of printing. So we've eliminated printing of business cards, flyers, brochures. Um, we can also create any type of form. So instead of emailing a customer a form that they need to print and get a pen and fill it out, scan it and send it back, um, we can code and embed a form onto the digital business card. So all you should do is you tap on the form, uh, use your finger, fill in all the details. Um, for, for an example, they've got these COVID-19 content to access forms. So you can just tap on it, fill it in, sign with your finger, press submit, and this will link back to the owner of the digital business card, or we can link it to an admin department, um, or we can um, integrate all of this into a, a CRM. Um, so those are just a few of the things that we do on the digital business card. Um, and then just at the bottom, if you want to give your, your digital business card to someone, um, all you should do is you tap on the QR code, they take out their phone, scan it, and the digital business card will jump over to their phone. Um, especially in these COVID-19 times that we, no one wants to touch paper or business cards. So this is a nice digital uh, solution to share all your details. Um, I'm just going to open another example. Um, I just wanted to give you one example of the forms that we do. So Engel and Focus, um, we've done quite a few different forms for them. So instead of emailing a person, let's say this rental inquiry form, you can just tap um, on your digital business card. Um, you can fill in all the details. Also, if you need documents, IDs or um, bank statements um, or, or payslips, whatever it is, um, you can just take a picture with your phone it will upload to PDF and we use an AI technology where you can integrate all of this data um, straight into a CRM or into the system that you're using at your company. Um, yeah, so that's just a, a brief detail on how a digital business card um, solution works. Um, and it's designed for shareability. I mean, if you want to share this digital business card, you just tap on the share button and you can you can share it uh, via SMS, email, WhatsApp, um, whatever whatever platforms you're using um, on your on your phone. Sorry, excuse my phone; it just doesn't stop. <laughs> um, the, the second thing that we do is we specialize in creating virtual spaces, um, which is the VPix uh, 360 virtual tours, which is very popular and. Um, the 360 virtual tour is basically a link um, and a nice place to put the link is on either on your digital business card or on your website. Um, for an example, this is Ken Rosen um, from the United States as well. Um, this is his digital business card um, and he has all his um, 360 virtual tours. So he does some real estate, a restaurant, um, automotive, he does some boats. So we can also create web pages um, to, to host all your 360 virtual tours, um, which is a, a nice platform to share with the customer if they want to have a look at a commercial building or um, a house. Um, the third, the third um, software that we do is we 
uh, do artificial intelligent leads generating uh, chatbots. So with the, with the digital business card, um, we can tell you, we can give you an analytical report. I can tell you how many times people are viewing it, um, how many times people have downloaded it, um, which houses they've been viewing, um, and then also from where in the, in the world it's been viewed. But the only thing that we can't give you is a, is a um, name, cell phone number, and email address. So we've created a chatbot. Um, I'm just going to open another demo here. So we've created a chatbot, which is a floating icon in the bottom right-hand corner um, of the digital business card. We can also embed it on your website. So anyone that taps on that chatbot, um, it's going to give you a lead uh, within an instant. Um, for the example, uh, this is Tim Upton from um, Harcourts uh, in Cape Town. If I tap on his chatbot and click Get Started, uh, we can create a, a workflow. So this is a virtual assistant um, built with machine learning um, or artificial intelligence. And we can program it to do anything, basically. We can program it to ask you if you want to buy a house or if you want to rent a house. We can program it to ask all the qualifying questions. Um, how much can you afford? Which areas are you looking at? Um, and what it will do, it will actually get all the all his personal properties in that price range or in that area, and it will send it to the customer. So this is a robot that works 24-7, no human error, um, and it's an awesome platform for lead generation. Um, just for an example, my own chatbot and my digital business card. Um, my digital business card is viewed on average about 6,000 times a month, and over half of those people are tapping on my chatbot. So I'm getting about 3,000 leads a month, um, people just tapping on their chatbot, and that's all over the world. Um, because of the shareability of the Meishi card. I mean, I send it just to a couple of people. They share it with their friends and colleagues, and they share it with their friends. Um, and it touches all corners of the globe. Um, and that's how I get leads. Um, yeah, so that's an a awesome platform for, for leads generation, uh, the chatbot. Wonderful. And Do you want to maybe just add, sorry, Bruce, I just want to just sort of interrupt you here. Um, you've done some interesting research on chatbots versus apps. Yes. And uh, do you want to just share us a little bit about what the, what the research has come back on that one? Because uh, it was very interesting data. Do you just share a little bit uh, with you on that? Yes. Um, well, um, apps is quite outdated um, at the moment. I mean, if you want to download an app, you need to go to a Play Store and App Store and download it. And a lot of people don't want to do that um, these days. But I mean, for, for leads generation, um, the chatbot is the way to go. Um, even what we can even do is we can create um, keywords. Um, so these chatbots are either linked to Facebook, uh, WhatsApp, Telegram, or web, website chatbots. We create a few di uh, different types. Um, and, and what we can do is it's actually going through your, your Facebook the whole time. So, so if it picks up, I want to buy, or I want to rent, it actually kicks in a chatbot. Um, even if it's in the middle of the night and we sleep in, um, it will pick up and it will start the qualifying conversation. Um, yeah, so yeah, the, the, that's how, how good the, the chatbot works. Wonderful. So does it work while you sleep there, Bruce, which is great. I think everybody needs that. 24-7. Doesn't need break or holidays. Wonderful. <laughs> Okay, Bruce, are you going to, I mean, one of, one of the things that really stands out for me is, is obviously the power, the power of your, the power of your, your, your handset, your, your phone. And, yes. uh, and I mean, you've just demonstrated an incredible value add to somebody out there is the, 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 the handset. Yes. Um, well, 90% of the world's population is transacting using their mobile phones. I mean, if you see, if you go any, into any meeting, first thing people do is put their cell phones on, on a desk. So we've created all our softwares um, from the digital business cards, the 360 virtual tours and the chatbots with mobile in, in mind mainly. I mean, th that's the future. That's how people are transacting these days. Um, Another thing that I, I didn't show you yet is we've even created virtual meeting rooms on the digital business card. Um, so if you want to have a meeting with someone, you just send them your digital business card. They click on your link. We can connect it to Zoom. 
Microsoft Teams um, or whatever platform you're using, you can actually have a meeting through the digital business card. Um, if you at a show house and someone can't make it, they can meet you through your digital business card. You can do a walk around. You can change your camera to the back of your phone, um, show them the kitchen or whatever, wherever you want to show them while having a, a live conversation. So that's the future. Um, yeah. Wonderful. Fantastic. Thank you, Bruce. Um, Bart, we're going to come back to you a little bit later after Corin and Wayne because we haven't actually seen a demonstration yet of the virtual tour and we would like you to do that. So I'm just giving you a heads up afterwards. And uh, so our next uh, presenters is Corin and Wayne. We're going to hand you over uh, the reins. So it's over to you to show us uh, the coin platform. Thanks, uh, Neil. Before before we do a little demo, just a bit of an intro. Um, in our role here today, we, we sell software, even though we had introduced ourselves as having grown up in the property business and in the broking space, we're using that skill set to develop the, the systems and we are not broke. Our business does not operate as a brokerage. That's the one comment to make. The other is that today we're showing our rental platform. We also offer a sales platform, which, which pretty much offers the same elements as, as the rental, but, but in sales and, and it's available. And, and I'm pretty sure that every broker who's sitting out there is saying to himself, do I need this? And the, the answer to that is, yes, you probably do. Um, not because you don't want to change, but because the world is changing whether you like it or not. And so I think um, Bart made the comment earlier that six months ago, pre-COVID, pre most of us saw Zoom as a nice to have. And when I wanted to see my granny in Australia, I used it to see her, but now I use it daily. And for those of us who live in South Africa, I'm not going to probably travel up to Johannesburg every week to have a one-on-one. -on -one. I'm going to travel up to Johannesburg now and then to have a coffee with my client, but the rest of the time I'm going to meet him in, in, these, in these rooms. So I think there are efficiencies that have come out of technology that we've seen in COVID. They say that technology has probably jumped five years in terms of its um, adoption within a sort of eight week, week period from the time that we had the hard lockdown in South Africa. And I think more and more people are starting to utilize it. I've been on different webinars with you, uh, Neil, where I've made it clear that I don't think, unlike some of the doomsday preppers out there, that we are never going to go back to the office. I think people will return back to the offices once the mobility issues are over. I think people will go and visit properties once this is over. But it certainly will make us a lot more efficient about doing various things. We'll still be able to operate from home and still be able to speak to the boss when I have a little bit of the sniffles and I can't get to the office. And, and that is what we're offering today. You know, again, and, and my last comment before we get into it is that um, Kodak, if, if one didn't adapt and you still wanted to, to operate on your photography and form as you did 30 years ago, at the moment to just get your form developed in Cape Town is probably almost impossible. So you could quite happily agree that you're going to use your camera and you're going to stick to using form, but that's great. Nobody's going to develop it for you. The same with, I tried playing a record in my car the other day, and my son had to hold on to the record player, and I had to put a <laughs> in the boot um, to make the record work. And then I re remembered I had Bluetooth on my phone, and within seconds, I could find almost any song in the world and play it. It's, it's that same efficiencies that we're seeing in other industries that we're talking about bringing into property. We're not talking about doing away with brokers. We're not talking about doing away with the role of, of the various players in the market. We're talking about 
how one makes those players more efficient. And so the offering that we present is one, and ultimately it's going to bring you to that, and that is that a lot of what is offered in the market at the moment has a marketing element to it. But it doesn't have, a, and if you're in sales, if you're in property, ultimately you collect your comp when the deal has been done. And if you're, and so we'd like to, what we're gonna show you today is, is not only the marketing aspect, but the ability to close. And so if you take Amazon, if you, you couldn't buy the shoes on Amazon, it doesn't help much that you can see them. It, it does need to have that closure element. And so we've taken, we've worked with Barks them and VPix, we've worked with Bruce them because all of those tools bring us together in terms of marketing it. But in the end, what our platform offers is the transactional element in which you're able to close the deal. And so as a broker, the broker will interact with his, his buyer, but ultimately he still wants to close the deal. And if your buyer is sitting in Worcester and you're sitting in Pitsonavata, you want to be able to close the deal. And, and this is what, what our system, system does offer. So we offer an aggregation where properties from around different owners, different agents are brought onto one system. People are able to view it. People are able to do the virtual tours, which we're going to see later from part. People are able to access via their mobile apps because we use Bruce, Bruce's technology to put it to that. People are able to access all the information relating to due diligence right on the system because often that is, is lacking. But ultimately, it all comes back down to being able to, when I like the property, being able to buy it, or when I like the property, been able to place an offer without leaving my desk, without leaving my office, or without leaving my cell phone. And that is what we're going to try and show now. Right, thank you. Questions that have come through. And uh, so what I'm gonna do is before we get into all the Q and A's and that kind of stuff, uh, I'm first gonna ask Bart, Bart, we'd like to see a brief, virtual tour and maybe just take us through that uh, that process and then we can get into all the q and a's um there's a lot of questions around poppy there's a lot of questions around um you know the cost effectiveness of using this technology and that kind of stuff which we'll get to a little bit later and then also to the practicality so bart over to you in terms of the the tour All right, well, thanks again for having me back. I guess I went through my presentation and uh, I guess this is the important part is show the visual. Um, what I'm showing you basically here is what we sometimes find in pre-construction. We find a lot of companies that are trying to get some visualization of, well, we have the same home, but the builder actually has three different types of kitchens. You can pick a different flooring product, you can pick uh, different backsplash. We're also going to make some changes to the cabinetry and also to the countertops. So what we did here is create a simulation that not only works on your iPhone, um, your Mac, your PC, this is also designed to run on a simple Google Cardboard, you know, headset. We also have the Google Plastic, you know, headsets where you can take your phone and slide it into the device, but the more popular I would say products today is the drop in the price and the now affordability in with the Oculus VR headsets. You put one of these things on and you look at this gorgeous kitchen, but you have this sensory deprivation. So you've really stepped inside the picture and you can just start looking around. And this is one of the things that we have found has been a really big impact for people who want this because now I can actually bring people inside the home and they can do this from wherever they are with an actual VR headset. So in this particular kitchen, we have this very nice dark wood. Well, if this were my house and my kitchen, I kind of like something a little bit more natural. So all I do is look at the actual new swatch and I want to go, this whole kitchen just changed. But the little extra things, the countertops changed. I use complementary colors. And if I look over here, you know, we have the same uh, countertops and I have 
the cabinets have changed a little bit. So watch what happens very carefully here, because when you look around, it's like you brought in an interior designer to change the color of the walls, the paint, everything, because you want to have those things complementary. My wife, you know, she likes something a little bit more like the white dust storm. So when we do the white dust storm, that shows up. Not only do we have the actual beautiful new floors, but look what happened. The countertops just changed to a very nice dark complementary granite. So as you go and look through these whole things, this really helps you narrow down which flooring, which kitchen, which product that you want, so you can make that decision of what apartment, what condominium, and what changes you want that fast. And that's gonna be important to bringing the customer faster to a close, because now they can visualize what it's going to look like. That's one of the important things that we bring to the table, and that's one of the neat things with virtual reality. We get this next question a lot, and I go back to some of the questions that we get from time to time, and it's, you know, well, why doesn't that camera produce a better quality image? Well, here's the reason why. Seeing is believing. This was taken with a Ricoh uh, Z1, and as you can see, it's not a bad image, but, you know, those windows are a little hot, a little bit undesirable. So that's what the Ricoh Z1 can produce. If I want to go see what the R1 can produce, this is one of our more popular cameras because it has a larger sensor. It has a 4K module you can snap into the camera in addition to your 360 by 360 camera module. I've never seen any camera that can do that. And this is an actual photograph of my house in Monument. So this is my place over here. My office is right over there. And if I want to go see a different camera, this is the Insta360 Pro camera. And you can see it's got a much better resolution, but it has a much larger sensor. The camera, of course, also costs around $5,000. But like I said, you're going to get what you pay for. And it's a much, much sharper image. For estate agents who do have an SLR camera, like uh, the Nikon or the Canon, this is gonna get you the best resolution because you're taking the same photograph basically in four slices. Very important on high resolution images. We do a lot of this type of work um, for high-end architectures. And this is a shopping mall that was for sale for $162 million. Um, they're not gonna worry uh, about, we have $30,000 in camera gear and we have three photographers showing up. This is something they want to have because this produces an incredible image. You can zoom in quite a bit without the pixels falling apart, but this was taken not with a cheap point and shoot $400 camera. This was taken with the Nikon 810. And of course the professional photographer who was doing this used to work at a newspaper and has got 25 years of experience in producing content that looks like it just came off of the front cover of a National Geographic page. So that um, hopefully explains a little bit more of what we can show yeah. as far as virtual tours and the different quality Wonderful. of different cameras. Great, thank you, Bart. Okay, let's move on to the Q&A and uh, discussion points. There's quite a few questions. Thank you all for your questions. Please, I encourage you more to, to send through more questions. And I'm gonna start off with you, Bruce, and it, it comes down to cost again. There's a lot of questions around cost and cost efficiencies and that kind of stuff. And one of the questions for you is, Bruce, is it cost effective for an individual estate agent to make use of your tech? And we're talking about Meiji, the chatbots, and in fact, also the virtual tours, because you're also representing in some way the virtual tours in South Africa. Should the estate agency not want tech? So, so if they don't want to use it. So is, is it cost effective? I think that's really, and I think maybe just, just elaborate in terms of more in terms of what kind of return I could get and what of that cost in, in versus return. Uh, you, you, you are, you're on mute, uh, Bruce, if you could just restart. Just unmute yourself, please. There we go. There we go. Um, right. Well, the, the, cost, the cost of one um, Meishi digital business card is 800 Rand for the year. Um, and if you just take in consideration the cost saving, I mean, printing of business cards, printing of your flyers, brochures, all the forms that you send in out, um, 
paying 800 rand to digitize all of that, it's, you know, it's very cost effective. Um, yeah, with regards to, to all the other pricings, uh, the chatbots, we charge a thousand rand a month. Yeah, that's a little bit more involved um, to create it as well. And it takes a little bit longer to create. Um, but if you take in consideration the, the leads that you're getting out of that, um, and um, if you can convert those leads, I mean, a thousand rand a month is not much. Um, and then yeah, a 360 virtual tour, we charge 250 rand a month um, to do one house or one school or, or, or a commercial building or per entrance. Um, yeah, so those are the prices of, of the, the three different products. Excellent. Great. I'm going to go to Wayne and to Karen. Um, there's a question here. What about the virtual sales agreement and stroke tenant lease agreements, clause by clause, to agree to or edit to amend with explanation online and we're talking about information such as rates levies financial accounts and reserves uh, in the case of sectional title property so essentially all the due diligence process how does that work and i think maybe you can just uh, talk a little bit about that on the on that so your your lease agreement, your landlord's lease agreement, will be available on on the system to to peruse. If it's a sale agreement, that sale agreement will be available on the system to peruse. The landlord or the agent of the landlord will determine what elements are changeable and which elements are not. So, if you were taking the lease from a large corporate listed you know there's very little they allow you to change if you're taking the lease agreement from somebody else and again there are there are there are applications available which allows one to make changes on these on these lease agreements and, and sale agreements and once those have been agreed the parties then agree on the signing document and that signing document is then made available to to all of the parties, be it a lease agreement, be it a sale agreement, and those are signed using signature apps. Again, we the fact that I look like I'm from out of space kind of creates the impression that I am this whiz kid, and that's not completely true because there are lots of technologies that other people have developed that, that we are that we are latching onto and, and that we are incorporating into our systems. So signature of documentation, um, changing of documentation is, is software applications that we use in the same way that we use VPIX or we use Meishi, who are experts in particular fields and, and one, one incorporates. What had taken us a very long time um, in developing was to ensure that our software met the Alienation of Land Act and that when you transacted, you transacted in a way and with a methodology and signatures that made it legal. Because in South Africa, it is, as, as, as everybody who's listening knows, there are very particular ways of doing certain things. The Act sets that out very clearly. The Act sets out what documents need to be signed. The Act sets out the fact that a, a sale agreement or a lease agreement has to be in writing if it's for longer than a particular period. And so a lot of that needed to be incorporated. And that is, has been built into our software to ensure that we meet all the, the, the legal requirements. The same in, in terms of the application of copy. All of the data that is obtained from a client is either held on behalf of you in a data bank or held by you if you are the landlord or the agent who is using our system. And so that information is not just freely available on, on databases. We don't offer the, we don't sell the databases onto others so that you can get phone calls at three o'clock in the morning about toilet rolls that are selling cheap at Macro. All of this information is, is held in vaults data vaults that are protected. Wonderful. Okay, there's a, there's a question here, but I'm going to put it through to everybody. 
and uh, and it, but I think it pertains also to, to Coin Platform. And uh, the question is: Are the third-party portals like Private Property and Property Twenty Four still relevant? And Bart, just for clarification, it's it's the same as Zillow. Zillow is very similar to and Trulia.com. Um, in the United States, uh, private property and property to be for our property portals. Who would like to take up that question? Would, uh, uh, would Wayne? It looks like you want to. Or Karen, you want to. Wayne always likes to answer. Wayne for a question. And the, answer, the short answer is yes. You know, Property 24 spends a huge amount of money on advertising their brand. And so at the moment in South Africa, certainly within the residential space, if one watches television, if you listen to the news, if you read traditional mail, they do a lot of advertising of their brand. And so when a buyer is looking for a property, his first port of call is going to be property 24 people because it is top of mind, but they are a marketing channel and they are one of many marketing channels. It, it, is, an, it is a little known fact that Gumtree probably within the commercial space puts out more um, properties for, for marketing than does Property24 and those, those channels all have a place in the sun. It, it, they, you know, if you want to get your property sold, if you want to get your property let you want to reach as broad a target market as you can and that is where property 24 or gumtree or, or any other will, will play a role okay wonderful okay so um we're getting back to um the virtual reality tours there's a lot of questions and it and it's all about the value again and but i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna give this one to you why is a virtual tour a monthly charge and not a one sort? Well, you know, Your it's comment. really kind of like the world we live in today. I mean, the, the point that we have is I wish I could go back to the days where I don't have to pay Adobe Systems $9 a month for me to rent Adobe Photoshop. Conversely, you know, that was an $865 product. And it's like, well, you know, you pay for it once and you keep using it all you want. Unfortunately, the world kind of changed when Netflix and things kind of went online with subscriptions. Steve Jobs starts, you know, renting songs for 99 cents each. Everybody's going to be paying something until the day we die for subscription services. And the way we keep the cost of business lower is that example from Adobe. I no longer have to pay $896 for the Photoshop product. I'm paying $8.95 a month for using it, which is a lot more affordable. Um, virtual tours, for example, like with this one, you know, we constantly have to make changes to the actual software product because Chrome changes. Netscape is, or Firefox is going to change, and Microsoft Edge is going to change. And you know, we're going to have a new update to Windows. So everything changes. So we have to make those micro changes to keep everything running smoothly. So for that, yeah, it's a couple dollars a month, but it's not $865 like it once used Absolutely. to be. Absolutely. Yeah. Big difference. Yeah. Big change. Economies of scale. I think so. Yeah, absolutely. Makes sense to me. Thank you. Thank you for that part. I'm going to ask Corin. Corin, there's, there's quite a few questions around commercial and industrial properties. Um, and they say one of the questions, uh, and it's, I think it's directed to your way, it's small commercial and industrial properties offer a great balance to an investment basket and are less emotionally intensive. Also, property syndications make sense in the commercial and industrial area. Is this not an area that the panelists or yourselves should consider? Well, I mean, you're there already, aren't you? Yeah, absolutely, Neil. So we've, we've started our focus on in the office sector um, because we thought that was the most complicated sector in terms of all the flexibilities, et cetera, that one needs to accommodate. Um, and we've actually just started rolling out um, our industrial product. So you'll probably see, we've probably spent about 30 or 40 industrial um, properties on, you know, on our platform. 
Um, and then the next one will be retail. So retail has always been the one that the funds have said, well, we don't really need you to market, but times have changed. And um, you know, every single sector is going to need some kind of a, a platform to enable, to enable them to use this um, to market, you know, do their full due diligence and to, to transact. So if it's a property, no matter what, if it, if it has to transact via the Alienation of Land Act, then our software is able to, to handle it. We're even right. building something and what, in the development space, um, the residential development space. That was a question I was going to ask because I think there's a, a lot of probably residential agents and stuff out there and that's going to be interesting. So we're going to watch this space and uh, so I would certainly think that that's something that could be quite significant in, in, in that area. Do you want to maybe just when elaborate you a little on that? Or? When, you, when you marry it together with what Bart just showed, um, so in the in the new development space, if you marry together our platform together with Bart, with what Bart has shown, then you move away from having to build that one show house with one set of finishes, but you're able to show clients a myriad of options. You're able to probably show them the very unit that they want you to purchase. And, and that is what, what, what sort of the virtual tour element starts bringing into, into, the, into the pot as well. So the costs go down for the developer, but the optionalities for the buyer and the broker increases 20-fold. You know, it, it isn't even a function only about sitting at home and doing it. If you had your VR headset at the site, it, it could be a site that only had one little tree on it, you'd be able to, to walk the person through it right on the site. So, so a, lot of, a lot of the software that, that has been offered is not only dealing with the COVID issue. It is not only about lack of mobility and sitting at home and doing it. A lot of the software that we're talking about is about being able to utilize it on the site in real time, in reality, and the optionalities that go with it. Okay, excellent. All right, so I'm gonna move on to our last question just before we move on to a wrap up from each of you. I'd like you to give you around about a three minute wrap up in closing. Um, there is a question related to um, whilst clients, both rental and sales are drawn to properties via a visual link, the real actual adds the perspective they require to close the deal. The location, the area, and the physical aspects of the property may change the deal totally. So from a commercial and industrial perspective, the question is not sure whether we will see all deals concluded without a physical inspection. What are your thoughts? And I'm just going to put it to right to, to the entire panel on that one. Are we, are we going to see the end of physical inspections? Is it still going to happen? Thoughts there, please. And, and, and this is to all the panels. Members. No, I mean, we, yeah, we, we think that it's, you always have that final viewing. Um, uh, but all the technology is doing is really, instead of going to view 10 properties, you're whittling it down to two or three in order, you know, where you can see all the photographs, you can see the virtual tours, you can walk, walk through the properties, so you can see as much information as possible in order for you to, to whittle down that choice. Um, it's highly unlikely that, that all property transactions will, will happen without any viewing, um, but, but yeah, it certainly will make the whole process much more um, efficient. And brokers will become more efficient because they won't have to do 10 They'll only have to do two or three. But we start starting Absolutely. to see Bruce will answer to it, but, but, but the virtual tour work that we're doing with them, for example, is not only to tour the property. It, it, it is to give you a virtual tour of what is around it, what, what, what the surrounding area looks like. And so it's, it's a bit like a, 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 a much more hyped up Google street view that, that we are also offering and, and, and obviously a lot 
more up to date. So the, the problem with a lot of the Google Street View stuff is that it, that it's quite dated. Whereas the work we're doing together with Bruce and, and with uh, Bart is very on point in that it could have been done a week ago, two weeks ago, tomorrow. Right. Okay. So, yeah, you want to add to that, Bart? Yeah, I was going to actually add to that because, you know, here um, we have actually seen properties actually sold sight unseen. Uh, Keller Williams is a popular uh, real estate brokerage here in the United States. And we are working with some luxury brokers in the Dallas Fort Worth area. Then this one area of homes, we have um, the supply and demand issue. We have very posh, very expensive $2 million, $3 million homes in the South Lake area of Dallas. has a lot of nice lakes. So when people of means are looking for their second home, for example, it's not unusual for us to be told that we have sold homes sight unseen in the sense that they wired $30,000 right over escrow without physically jumping on a plane, landing in Dallas and physically inspecting the property. That happened secondly. So what we're seeing now is virtual tours are creating, oh my gosh, I got to have that property now because there's only three or four homes left on the lake. I got to have this one. So in order to be able to secure that home, they'll wire those funds to the brokerage immediately. Yes, they still fly in. Yes, they still inspect the property. Even if you still close in the United States, we have this three day right of rescission. Um, we've seen the market change in the automotive industry. You're not buying a $2 million home, I'm buying a $20,000 Mazda, but you can buy these cars online and they'll deliver it to you. But you're gonna step inside that car, you're gonna walk around the car, you're then going to use like a MySheet digital business card to say, I gotta have this, and you're filling out the finance form so you can qualify for the financing. The you know customer service rep and agent calls you and says, Bart, you're pre-qualified, um, we'll deliver your car to you tomorrow. And I still get a couple of days to test drive the car if it's not for me. So we're seeing that transactions are happening a whole lot faster because I'm bringing that virtual reality of that home experience to you. I'm bringing the car experience driving. Imagine you behind the wheel. This is all changing. So do I see the day where it's all going to happen? Um, yeah, it's a natural evolution because we're already seeing big major deposits getting wired. But if you don't like that car, if you don't like that house, we still have rules that say, yeah, you get three days to try it on for size. And if you don't like it, you know, we can swap you out for something else. Residential, residential, obviously, residential is obviously still often driven by a personal emotion. So the last house I bought out in Brayton, we bought it because the tree was in the right position and the sun dappled through it. But in commercial space, you are buying often based on paperwork. And all, and that is, I think, what is also available on, in, 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 in the online space is that all the paperwork you require is available and downloadable. And you can do that at 12 o'clock at night if you want. When I first got into property and I needed to purchase something, I would have to go to what was then a data room that the seller set, set up for me, usually right in the back of his office. And I would sit there for two days trying to sift through the data, the, the information. All of this information is now available in virtual data rooms that are accessible to, to a myriad of clients. If your bot can buy a property from me today and have all that information available to him online as we speak, as, as opposed to as it happened previously, I would have had to email it to him or or we transfer it to him. These things, it, it's, it's, it's not, again, you know, I think we all are trying to reiterate that it is not about taking away the role of the agent or taking away the role of different players in the market. It's about providing with them with tools to make them a lot more efficient. Great. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around to each one of you and ask you to give some closing comments. I'm conscious of time. We're approaching the end of the webinar. I want to thank everybody for coming on earlier on. I know some people have to rush off to meetings, that kind of stuff. 
Um, there will be opportunity to see the recording and the replays of this webinar on the REI Mag website. You just uh, click on show. There's a drop down for uh, webinars and underneath over there, you can actually get access to that. So I want to ask, I'm going to go first go to Bruce. So Bruce, can you maybe give us, uh, can you give closing comments, the closing thoughts in terms of technology, how PropTech is changing in the world, utilizing your particular technology, and maybe a word for the naysayers out there. Do you want to maybe give your closing comments? I'm going to give you two to three minutes, if you don't mind, just to yes. close off on it. Thanks. Um, well, about 10 years ago, um, I was telling companies that things were going to go full digital. And that's when I created our software. I mean, people were saying, no, things are not going to go digital. But um, in these recent times, and especially um, thanks to COVID-19, it's forced us into the fourth industrial revolution. Um, I think now is definitely the time to go digital. Um, now, all those companies that said no 10 years ago, I mean, we've signed them all up already on our software um, and also 360 virtual tours. So I definitely think you know, now is the time um, you know, to take your business for digital. Wonderful. Thanks, Bruce. And thank you very much for your contribution. It was a great, great, wonderful to see how things are evolving rapidly, certainly in the, the, in the agent broker space. But your closing comments, please. Um, and I know you got up at uh, three o'clock in the morning. I want to thank you for that. I mean, you must be, you're only just starting your day. <laughs> and you've fired already up already. <laughs> I'm already craving my second cup of coffee already. But no, I thank you very much. Being ex military, um, it's really not uh, a problem to wake up. But I did sleep earlier yesterday. But no, I wanted to kind of say thank you for everyone, and especially some of the questions we've had from some of the uh, folks um, who are asking about costs and questions, because Bruce, you know, obviously hit the nail on the head. Ten years ago, it was very difficult to kind of imagine what we'd be doing, you know, today. Um, as one of the guys who helped create, you know, digital camera technology, I would never imagine, you know, basically cameras being this small. I never thought that my brick phone, the one I used to have like Gordon Gecko had, the big giant brick in the antenna, you know, from Wall Street. I never thought that yeah. thing would be motorized into a phone and I can text with it. I can take pictures with it. And it's like, you know, we used to see basically things would divide and now we're seeing convergence. And that's a little different because it's not Darwinian. You know, things aren't dividing anymore. They're being combined. And the combination of things is really making life a lot easier for real estate uh, agents and brokers around the world to do a whole lot more with technology. But for some of us who remember when we were selling real estate 15, 20 years ago, we used to have no technology. We had a color fax machine. We would drive people, you know, to the property yeah. and show them things. So it's changed a lot over the last 20 years. So digital is going to be a part of what we need to be doing. And we're excited to be part of this group because we're not just selling the technology. We're teaching people how to make money with it and how to transact faster with it. And we can't do it all. You know, we need coin. You know, yeah. we need folks like Bruce at Maishi who can help us combine and package things up so while individually we're very good at what we do but when we group together we're a lot stronger and when we're strong in that actual uh, product mix the actual customer whether you're a commercial or residential real estate agent truly benefits from working with a group than the individual company wonderful thank you very much for those closing comments bruce and Thank you for being part of the panelists today. It's been uh, fantastic to see that technology. And I'm sure you've convinced a lot of people out there that uh, virtual reality tours is certainly the way to go. All right, so I'm going to give closing comments. Now, normally, you know, Karen, I'm going to give you the option to either have the last word or I'm going to give that. And I'm going to give you the choice because, you know, we, this is one the last and, word. I I, I can't promise that um, I will, but I'll try my best. <laughs> Listen, yeah, this so is this is women's here. month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, there are way too many men here. We need to start seeing a difference, please. Um, Absolutely. Okay. Yes. My, 
My comment really is just that, you know, in order for tech to be adopted successfully, two things need to happen. One is that it needs to make the process more efficient. And the second is that it needs to save costs. And this applies to all users in the industry, landlords, tenants, brokers, um, purchasers. You know, I was uh, um, in, in the travel industry when technology such as Travel Start and Booking.com was launched and agents were absolutely terrified. They thought, you know, their whole world is going to change. Now, if you chat to them, most of them actually use this technology to become more efficient, um, to, to view the options of what hotel rooms are available, um, to, to view the options of what, what flights are available, and it's really just made them more competitive. Um, so yes, and it has given consumers the platforms to be able to do these bookings themselves, but are you going to book a family holiday overseas um, by doing everything online? I highly doubt it. I wouldn't have the guts to do it. So you go to a specialist. So brokers and, and everybody in the industry needs to change the way in which they operate um, and, and become um, specialized and specialize in specific fields of brokerage. Um, and I, so my, my closing really is just don't be scared of tech. It really is there to help you, to enhance you. It's never gonna take um, over the human element completely. It's there to make your lives easier and actually to become a cheaper product for you um, at the end of the day. Wonderful, wonderful way to, to end off. Wayne, over to you. You do actually have the last word, but I'll leave oh, the door open. No. <laughs> I, think, no, I, think, I think these are changing times. This, None of us last year this time would have, if you had told me that the world was going to grind to a halt and there wasn't an aeroplane going to fly anywhere in the world, I would have told you that you've lost your mind. That change in the world is going to probably mean that we're going to be a lot more cautious about how we go forward. I think even until there are proper vaccinations, etc., probably people are going to be cautious about about visiting, etc. But but in even despite that, we are still needing to sell property. And so these tools are going to for the for the short to medium term also allow people in the industry to keep their businesses going and then use that technology in the future in a, in a more efficient way. So with these changing times comes a need to change. And if we don't change, we're going to be left behind. Absolutely. And I think, uh, thank you for, for ending off on that note. I want to thank you all our panelists, for Bart Wilson, who's the founder of VPIX360, Bruce uh, Koenig, who's the founder of Meishi and Chatbots, and Karen Miller and Wayne van der Ventje are the co-founders of Coin Online. Thank you very much for your contribution today. I think it's been a fantastic webinar. There's been a lot of interest and uh, so a lot of questions and those on answered questions will be posted on the reimag.co.za website under the education section, Ask the Property Experts, and uh, we will get our experts to answer those questions. For those of you that had to sign up a little bit earlier, we understand. We've got to do business. Yeah, even during this lockdown period, I just believe the alcohol and cigarette ban has just been lifted. So that announcement is just breaking news. Can you believe it? In South Africa, under lockdown, we were not allowed to drink and smoke. We're back on the way. We, we, we're off the wagon, guys. <laughs> so anyway, if you want to get back to the recording, so the, the recording is on the RE IMAG website. It is under shows, and you can click on uh, webinars, and you can go to the Let's Talk property. So thank you to you, the audience. You've been a fantastic audience as well, and I know some of you had to leave a little bit earlier. Thank you for all your patience. Thank you for all your questions. And once again, to our panelists, my final thoughts, as Albert Einstein was once quoted as saying, he said, if I had an hour to solve a problem, I'd spend 55 minutes thinking about the problem, minutes thinking about solutions. And I believe this is so true 
of the PropTech world. So just a reminder, don't forget next week at exactly the same time, our webinar, which will be hosted by Derek Watts. And it's going to be women making an impact in property. So don't miss that. Let's